Welcome to the Institute for Cancer Research at Oslo University Hospital. We are the largest cancer research environment in Norway. Here at the Institute we do basic, translational and clinically oriented research. The Institute is part of the Comprehensive Cancer Center of the hospital. We are located in close physical proximity to the diagnostic and clinical activities. This gives us a unique setting for translational research and recruitment. We also have a number of clinicians in shared positions. Excellence in cancer research requires state-of-the-art equipment. Here at the Institute, we've organized cutting-edge core facilities into a separate department. The Department of Core Facilities provides easy access to cutting-edge technology and competence. Our unit for advanced microscopy provides services within light and electron microscopy to study protein localization and intracellular structures. We use live cell imaging to study active biological processes. Our unit for flow cytometry and preclinical imaging delivers services for advanced flow cytometry, for analysis and sorting. We have the latest mass cytometry technology, which provides high parameter analysis directly from the tissue sections. Preclinical imaging delivers magnetic resonance and in vivo fluorescence and luminescence imaging of different mouse models. The Genomics and Bioinformatics Unit provides state-of-the-art sequencing and microarray services to study the genome, epigenome and transcriptome, from single cells to bulk tumors. This, combined with the bioinformatics competence, delivers an end-to-end -end solution for basic and translational projects. The core facility also interacts with diagnostic environments. Together, we provide the infrastructure and competence to build the next generation of diagnostic tests. We aim to improve research quality by guiding in optimal choice of technology, making our research more competitive. In our department, we study basic molecular mechanisms of cell biology relevant for cancer. One of the systems we use are fruit flies, Drosophila melanogaster, and we use these in two main ways. First, we study normal development and signaling mechanisms that are also important for cancer. And second, we use them as cancer models, where we use fly genetics or drugs to model these cancer types. It all starts here in the fly room, where we select males and virgin females to set up our crosses. For instance, I'm using a fly leukemia model, where expression of a human leukemic oncogen leads to a leukemia-like phenotype in fly larvae. And I want to unravel the genetic network that underpins this leukemia development. The crosses result in larvae that express the leukemic oncogen and are depleted of a gene product of interest. And we dissect out the organs we are interested in from these larvae. A 
and we study the effects on cell types and organ size by high resolution and confocal microscopy. When we need even higher resolution or ultrastructural information, we use electron microscopy. The samples are cut in ultra-thin slices and imaged by an electron beam. We can also tilt the samples and reconstruct a 3D volume. We also do correlative light and electron microscopy and cryo-electron microscopy. the Department of Molecular Cell Biology, headed by Harald Stenmark. The close collaboration between experts on different technology platforms allow broad discussion on how to approach complex biological questions using a variety of different techniques. The Department of Tumor Biology has a strong translational focus. We have several researchers, including one group leader, in shared clinical positions. Through the close collaboration with the clinic, we have access to fresh tumor tissue. We use this tissue to perform direct analysis, like testing sensitivity to drugs. We investigate the molecular mechanisms or proteins driving tumor progression and metastasis. The long-term aim is to identify biomarkers and therapeutic targets. The tumor tissue can also be implanted in mice to form a growing tumor, or it can be used to form a cell line. We have a large collection of patient-derived cell lines and xenografts, representing different types of cancer. The models are used for functional studies, and are instrumental for testing novel therapies. Access to patient tumor tissue also allow genomic and molecular characterization. We have established procedures and know-how for clinical translation of high throughput technologies, including pipelines for computational interpretation. One example is a software for functional annotation of cancer genomes. This tool is used in previous and planned precision medicine trials, including MetAction and Impress Norway. Our aim is to contribute knowledge that will benefit the cancer patients. In the Department of Cancer Genetics, we use fresh tumor tissue and viable cells to unravel the molecular machinery driving tumor progression. With the DEPRAY system, we can sort and isolate single tumor cells for subsequent analysis. We have established the mouse intraductal, or the MIND system, for breast cancer in our lab. With this method, we inject tumor cells directly into the ducts of mice. This allows the cells to grow from within the ducts in a cellular environment mimicking the human situation. We can then study the stage-specific changes that occur during tumor progression. The department runs several clinical trials, such as the DART study. In this trial, patients with stage 3 lung cancer are treated with chemo radiation and a PDL1 inhibitor. Extensive biobanking within trials enable us to perform experimental research in parallel 
in order to set up precision diagnostic pipelines and to inform clinical trial design. Access to large biobanks and data sets enables us to go forward with more data-driven studies. We built a strong computational node in the department, which aims to use big data and AI to inform optimal treatment for the individual patients. Our goal is to contribute to implement precision medicine initiatives and to have an impact on the care of cancer patients. Welcome to the Department of Molecular Oncology. Here we have two main tasks. One is to educate and supervise students for academic degrees at the University of Oslo. And the second is to perform research here at the hospital. Our research focuses on common malignancies with rather few and imprecise treatment options. This is our ex vivo drug screening platform. So here is a sample of a colorectal cancer liver metastasis that we received from the operating theater this morning. This sample will now be processed in two different parts, where the first part is to grow the cancer cells as three-dimensional tumor organoids, which will then be treated with a library of different drugs and drug combinations to measure the sensitivities of the patient's own cancer cells. In the second part, the remaining piece of the tumor sample will be processed for molecular profiling by mutation sequencing and gene expression analysis. We also work systematically with liquid biopsy analysis, and this can be a valuable tool to improve the management of cancer patients. We have several liquid biopsy projects, including a national multicenter bladder cancer trial, where we are aiming at evaluating the clinical utility of our biomarker urine test for surveillance of recurrence in bladder cancer patients. Bladder cancer is one of the most expensive cancer types to manage due to the high recurrence rate after surgery and the extensive use of cystoscopies, looking inside the bladder with a camera. An accurate urine-based test represent a promising non-invasive alternative that could replace parts of these cystoscopies. An overarching aim for us is to establish a standardized roadmap for liquid biopsy analysis, from biomarker discovery to clinical implementation. And we are eager to see if our multicenter trial can confirm that this is a test that can be offered to patients in the future. Our vision is to develop strategies to enhance radio curability of cancer. The research in our department is therefore focusing on the biological responses to radiation therapy. In our research, we focus on gamma radiation, which is the standard procedure in cancer treatment today. In addition to this gamma treatment, we also expand our research into other types of radiation therapy, including radionuclides and visible light, as in photomedicine. We also have initiated projects on proton therapy and neutron therapy. 
Our common denominator is reactive oxygen species and the implications for treatment outcome. Our department is highly interdisciplinary with a main focus on physics, biology and medicine. In particular, we focus our research on DNA repair and cell cycle regulation, impacts on tissue oxygenation as well as immunological aspects of the various radiation treatment modalities. As an outcome of this, we hope to better understand the fundamental mechanisms involved in radiation-based therapy. Welcome to the Department of Cancer Immunology. Here we focus on finding new ways to make the immune system attack cancer. And we start with healthy blood donors, like me for example. Then we isolate the white blood cells by density gradient certification, a Norwegian invention, or by use of magnetic beads, also invented in Norway. Our white blood cells contain killer cells, such as natural killer cells and cytotoxic T cells, that we program to attack cancer cells. We also manipulate regulatory T cells that can inhibit immune responses to reverse the inhibition. Here we store viable cancer cells from patients with leukemia and lymphoma to unravel their Achilles heels. Our goal is to develop the next generation cancer immunotherapy and diagnostics by studies of normal and cancerous immune cells. People from all over the world at different stages of their careers are working here at the Institute. We're always looking to recruit the best young talents. We offer a dynamic and interactive environment, providing you with the best opportunity to develop your careers.